I know what you do here. I know your game, your hustle. You do? I do, and honestly, it's a good one. You saw an opportunity and you grabbed it. Look at all these cash cows on your wall just leaking money into your account. One overpriced hour at a time, good for you. I'm not here to ruin your business. I'm happy for you to keep milking these poor vulnerable people for as long as you damn well please. Hell, if your whole enterprise isn't the perfect example of the American dream, I don't know what it is. Hi everyone, I'm Dom Griffin. I'm a film critic and you're watching the Armchair Auteur. This is an ongoing video series I do where we talk about new movies, old movies, screenplay analysis, that sort of thing. So if you like movies and film culture and you like to see people pick those things apart, please consider subscribing. Today I'm reviewing I Care A Lot, the new film from Netflix and writer-director Jay Blakeson starring Rosamund Pike, Diane Weist, and Peter Dinklage. If you're familiar with the film from its trailer, you could be forgiven for thinking someone was trying to sneak an unauthorized sequel to Gone Girl past Disney's lawyers, given how Pike's starring role here as Marla Grayson is a direct and obvious attempt to recreate her iconic turn as Amy Dunn. Marla Grayson is a con woman whose main hustle is enshrouded in curated legitimacy. She is a professional caretaker legal guardian for elderly folks with money, a shrewd manipulator who worms her way into Mark's lives through her relationships with the courts that think she's a saint, the doctors who are happy to be rid of problem patients, and the owners of assisted living facilities that enjoy premium kickbacks. She systematically cuts off loved ones, sells off her clients' properties to pay herself and for the living facilities, and will do literally anything to maintain her stable of old cows till they're drained, dry, or die. The movie spends a hefty chunk of time introducing us to Marla's enterprise and the inner workings of her grift, complete with cool girl monologue sound-alike voiceover narration to sell her as the wannabe iconic anti-hero. But the film doesn't become remotely interesting until she finds her latest golden goose, an older woman played by Diane Weist who is not what she seems. Specifically, she's the mother of an unscrupulous and powerful criminal played by Peter Dinklage, one who doesn't take well to Marla's business. The film takes a protagonist who you genuinely do not like, and whose entire shtick is just outrageously awful, and then presents them with a mark that is not like the others to set up you, the audience, wanting to see her meet her match. But that's not really this movie. Sure, the second act plays around with a cat and mouse game between Marla and Dinklage's mysterious gangster, but it's not as thrilling or comedic as the filmmakers intend. There's two smart ways to play this. Either we should be actively rooting against Marla because she's so inherently detestable, and want to see this other guy who, though bad, at least exhibits a respect for familial ties that Marla doesn't, the ultimate nightmare for someone who profits off the weakness of the elderly who have been left behind by their progeny would be someone whose kid actually still gives a shit about her and won't take this lying down. Or the alternative would be to highlight that Dinklage is every bit as despicable as Marla is and set up an entertaining heel versus heel feud where we watch equally shitty people tear one another apart. There's hints of this approach early on in showing the visual kinship between Marla's wall of marks and Dinklage's Polaroid collection of drug mules. But ultimately, they go the other way, the way where the audience is expected to side with Marla on some level as an underdog, a figure whose grotesque nature is merely a reflection of late-stage capitalism and not any innate moral failing. But that doesn't work for a couple of reasons. Marla Grayson feels like little else than a pale imitation of Gone Girl's Amy Dunn. I understand that Pike has not been getting roles equal to her towering work in that film, and because a girl's gotta eat, I don't blame her for taking on this middling rerun of her past glory. But Gone Girl scribe Gillian Flynn truly imbued Dunn with such richness and complexity that she can be legibly read as a relatable anti-hero and a horrifying villain, depending on the perspective of the viewer. But Blakeson just isn't the writer Flynn is, so his creation feels like a lazy confluence of boring signifiers meant to capture the iconography and vibe of Amy Dunn without any of the substance. Like, she doesn't have to be likable to be a strong protagonist, but she ought to be compelling in some way. In Martin Scorsese's Wolf of Wall Street, another film with an ugly protagonist whose target audience seems to miss the point entirely, does make Jordan Belfort look cool to shitheads. But the film progressively shows you more and more how bankrupt he is while using his opulence as justification for his transgressions. In that film, the excess is the point, so you the viewer can be lulled along with rooting for a bad guy hurting people because of how expertly the film foists the spoils into your view. But I care a lot doesn't care much about that side of things. It never truly luxuriates in the lifestyle Marla's grift allows her to live, instead relying on self-satisfied voiceover narration to get us to understand her point of view. She's similarly drawn to attract the girl boss equivalent of Belfort sycophants, with her badass bluntness, the sapphic romance with her right-hand woman, and the surface-level posturing at toxic masculinity. She's practically ready-made for Twitter fan cams. But unlike, say, Jake Gyllenhaal's work in Dan Gilroy's Nightcrawler, she never feels like a haunting 
tulpa made from the rotten core of the American dream, but a genuinely cool figure whose vengeance we're meant to revel in. The film gives you every reason to yearn for her comeuppance, but then spends the entire second half going in a completely different direction entirely. In choosing to make this a boys versus girls thing, where Dinklage and his team are meant to evoke both the petty men who were jealous of Marla's success, as well as the evil rich types who drew her to this life in the first place, the film fails, because Marla is too entrenched in the aesthetic of self-justified white-collar crime, making her impossible to see as fighting from underneath. The real money would have been in minimizing Dinklage and focusing primarily on Wiest, who is barely utilized here but absolutely shines in her few minutes of screen time. Pitting a young woman justifying her crimes against the elderly as doing what she has to to survive against an older woman who has done much worse for far longer would have been so much more satisfying and fascinating than the silly excursions Blakeson chooses to waste time with instead. And I truly think Wee's experience and chemistry with Pike would have improved Pike's work as well and helped separate this performance from feeling like a Meet the Parents era De Niro performance simulacrum of her work in Gone Girl. Alas. I Care A Lot has its charming moments, to be sure. Like, it's not an entirely unentertaining film. It's just that it is nowhere near stirring enough to be a good thriller like it intends to be, and it's nowhere near sharp or funny or clever enough to be a black comedy like it seems to be aiming for as well. It is a movie that succeeds only in giving Rosamund Pike something to do, which is laudable, but I just think the movie could have been so much better than it was, so much shorter than it was, and so much more effective, because this really is a two hour long film that has like 94 minutes worth of story, and just isn't strong enough to get to the core of whatever it is they're after. I don't think the movie makes any kind of strong satirical points like it seems to be aiming for, and I just don't fully get why it exists or why it was made. Me personally, if I were you, I would skip this movie. I kinda wish I had. But I'm not gonna say it's completely without merit and there may be some people that are interested in it and will enjoy it more than me. That's obviously possible. Hope you guys like this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the little bell icon so you get notifications when I put out new videos. And if you have any thoughts about the film or you think I'm dead wrong, which is always possible, please hit me up in the comments below to tell me so. I will talk to you guys later. I hope you guys are doing well, staying safe, being good to yourselves and each other, wear your masks, and I'll see you in the next one.